Hello, this is Pu Meng Yang, and I'm a fifth year PhD student at Brown University. In this video, I'm presenting our work entitled A Virtual Reality Memory Palace Variant is Knowledge Retrieval from Scholarly Articles. I'm most excited about the components of a virtual reality memory palace and knowledge retrieval. The purpose of this work was to explore the value of virtual reality to help people, like researchers, effectively remember scientific knowledge. So, what is a memory palace? A memory palace is a powerful mnemonic device to help people quickly and effectively remember information. It evokes our spatial memory and uses spatialization to aid recall. To build a memory palace, we will follow three steps. First, we need a list of items that we want to remember. In the literature, this is usually a list of words, like a list of names or a shopping list. And here we are going to use the co-author list of this work as an example. I'm sure that at this point, you have forgotten who the co-authors are for this paper. Second, we also want a list of loci to provide spatial information, serving as the palace. This is usually a place or a scene that we are familiar with, like one's home. Here we are going to use my virtual apartment as an example. It is a replication of my apartment in physical reality. Third and the last, we need to build connections between the items and the loci we chose. This procedure requires our imagination to build mental visualization. The second author, Jin, is doing research about augmented reality on smartphone. So let's put him along with this virtual phone. The third author, Johannes, he plays video games. Let's put him on top of this monitor since he might have one too. Next, David Batter is a professor in the Department of Cognitive, Linguistic, and Psychological Science. Let's put him along with this stack of statistics and experimental design books, because he might have one of these books too. The second to last author, Colin Jackson, is considered an external cooperator. So we put him along with this virtual window, to imply that he is outside of Brown. Finally, the last author is my advisor, David Laidlaw. Let's give him the best in this room and put him along with the flower. To reinforce our memory, Jin is doing research about smartphones. Johannes plays video games. David Better might have one of these books. Callan is an external cooperator outside of Brown, and David Laidlaw is my advisor, having the flowers. We are good with the connections, and now we remove all the pictures. To recall, we imagine that we walk through the loci and pick up the connections we just built to help us recollect the co-author list. The intuition behind this is that it is easy for us to remember our home. As I have stuck here for more than six months, this familiarity with spatial information will guide us to the information we want to recall while the connections we build. Let's try to recall now. First, we see the phone. We know this must be Jean. Then, we see the monitor. We know this is Johannes. Next, we see the stack of books. We know this is David Batter. And we see the window. We know this implies Cullen. Last, we see the flowers. We know that must be David Laidlaw. Now we have a memory palace to remember the co-authors. Usually. Remembering a list of items like names is not quite useful. People might want to use a memory palace to remember semantic information. 
researchers might want to remember scientific knowledge in a stack of papers. Also, when we have a lot of information to remember, we need a much larger spatial space. This requires lots of training and is often quite hard to build a memory palace for. We could use virtual reality to provide a larger set of spatial loci, which also eliminates noise and unexpected interruption. All of this motivated this research of using virtual reality to provide rich spatial information to help remember scientific knowledge in scholarly articles. We set up a virtual reality coffee shop scene that could be familiar with the potential participants like college students. For experimental design purpose, we select four loci for the participants. They are, first, the coffee display, second, the shelf with food, and third, the cashier desk, and the last one is the coffee bag basketed. We use abstracts from the journal Animal Cognition to represent semantic knowledge. Participants can walk around, and they read these four abstracts in virtual reality and build connections between the abstract and the loci we picked up for them. In particular, they were instructed to not memorize the abstracts word by word. They were asked to remember the main ideas in the abstracts. This task was much more difficult than remembering a list of words and required a semantic understanding of the abstracts. Participants had to make sense of the abstract before they could build the connection. For example, for the abstract about elephant, they might want to imagine an elephant running on top of the chip bags. Note that we did not instruct how they should connect the ideas in the abstract to the loci. It was up to the participants. Since this mnemonic is slightly different from building a conventional memory palace, we call it a virtual reality memory palace variant. To understand the effectiveness of such a virtual reality memory palace variant, we compare it to a condition where participants only used spatial information in a picture on the screen as their loci. We term this an image-based memory palace variant. And also for comparison, we had a baseline condition, where all the participants read four abstracts on the screen and we did not give them any specific strategies to follow. In total, we had three experimental conditions. We recruit 26 participants from our campus and nearby institutions. This was before COVID-19. They were randomly divided into two groups of 13 participants. Each group of participants first finished their baseline condition, and after three or four days of a forgetting period, they came back and finished the second condition. In any of the three reading and remembering sessions, participants had up to 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, they were asked to stop reading or we remove the reading materials from them. Immediately after reading, participants were asked to recall on a desktop and also recognize a list of 10 sentences. We use both accuracy and precision to measure participants' recall and recognition performance. We grade their recall by counting the number of ideal units in their answers. We grade their recognition by counting the number of sentences they recognized. Accuracy is the correct number of ideal units or sentences, while precision is the total number of ideal units or sentences. For data analysis, we use 95 percentage bootstrap confidence intervals and cohesity for each condition. We also used a linear mixed effects model to compare the two memory palace variant conditions. We had two main observations from the results. First, compared it to the baseline condition, 
both memory palace conditions improved participants' recall and recognition performance, especially for the virtual reality condition. The effect size could be large, but we were not able to measure its actual size given the data. Comparing the two memory palace variant conditions, the virtual reality condition is an improvement over the image-based one, but the effect size is very small. We also performed post hoc quantitative analysis on demographic factors and locomotion data. As a result, we did not find any of these factors explaining the differences in participants' performance. Last, we performed a thematic analysis of the anecdotal feedback from the participants. We found that, first, 10 out of 13 participants thought the virtual reality coffee shop scene was reasonable for the task. Second, 5 out of 13 participants reported that using virtual reality could be distracting, the headset was quite heavy, and the scene was jerking sometimes. Last, some participants reported that they were able to associate an idea unit in an abstract to a small object in the virtual reality scene, and this may help them build a hierarchical memory palace. The structure may also align with the process of natural language understanding and spatialization. For a deeper discussion and details for experimental design, training, practice, instructions, as well as data analysis, please refer to our manuscript. To summarize, we hypothesized that a virtual reality memory palace variant could acknowledge retrieval from scholarly articles, and this is the fundamental differences between this and other studies of a memory palace variant, as most of them focused on remembering a list of items. Our task was much more difficult and might be relevant to semantic memory. We used the coffee shop scene and found that by connecting the idea units in the abstracts to the spatial information in the virtual scene could aid recall. Thank you so much for listening. I'm happy to answer any questions.